So moving on, some of the other things, again, if we, if we kind of a continuation of that last diagram, drugs can alter taste and smell. They can disrupt GI motility, causing constipation and or diarrhea. They can cause nutritional deficiencies. They can cause you to have an increase or a decrease in appetite, which can lead to weight loss and or weight gain. And if we're talking about chronic arthritis, we certainly don't want to see you gaining weight, putting more pressure on those joints. So remember, medicines don't come without a price. You just have to ask yourself if you're willing to pay that price. Is the risk of the side effect of the medication worth the benefit that that medication might provide? Or have you just ignored the fact of the matter that if you change your diet and change your lifestyle, uh, you could, for the most part, alleviate the vast majority of your pain and not have to worry about polypharmacy as, a, as even a viable solution. So next, let's look at this, talking about leaky gut. So pointing out here, leak, the reason why I keep bringing this up is because leaky gut is a precursor to autoimmune disease. And as I said earlier, autoimmune arthritis are quite common. And so if we have something called leaky gut that we know this can cause or contribute to autoimmune disease, then we certainly want to know what causes this leaky gut. And so, uh, again, looking at one of the main classes of things that causes leaky gut is right here. It's medicine, medication. So don't fall into that pain trap, right? Don't fall into that prescription pain trap because if you are gluten sensitive, and your symptoms are pain, autoimmune pain, and you're being medicated because of it, you're trading one aspect of leaky gut for another aspect of leaky gut, but you're still not solving the root problem. You're not solving the real reason why the gut is, is permeable in the first place. And so when you, when you mask or when you mitigate symptoms through artificial chemical manipulation without actually ascertaining why the symptoms exist, what you're serving to do is lie to yourself. And progress doesn't happen with fibs or with lies. Lies only lead you to kind of down a path of, of persistent issues or new problems. Okay, let's talk about Next, autoimmune pain and arthritis. So what are some things that we know about, uh, or at least some conditions that we know about as they relate to gluten? Now, I really want to focus and talk about gluten now. So this list, this diagram, autoimmune pain and arthritis, these are conditions related to gluten, meaning we either know gluten can contribute to these different diseases, or we know that gluten can directly cause some of these different diseases. So rheumatoid arthritis, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, lupus, reactive arthritis, migratory arthritis, fibromyalgia, dermatomyositis, ankylosing spondylitis, scleroderma, Raynaud's phenomena, neuropathy, reflex sympathetic dystrophy, or RSD. These are all just examples of chronic pain conditions that are autoimmune in nature that can either cause uh, joint autoimmune disease or neurological autoimmune disease that typically get treated predominantly. There's, there's kind of two main, we look at what, how do, how do doctors treat this? So treat treatment is typically steroids or biologics. Um, in some, in some cases, what are called DMARDs, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, is what that stands for. These are drugs like methotrexate. Okay, so this is pretty much what people get offered, right? And we know that methotrexate destroys the gut. We know that steroids destroy the gut. We know that biologics destroy the immune system and increase your risk for the development of infection and cancer. Um, so you're either left with these options to control or mitigate your pain, or you're left with identifying why these diseases exist. And so we look at, okay, what causes these things? We know that gluten can. If this is the first time you're hearing it, um, welcome to the club. If this is not the first time you're hearing it, 
great, let it sink in because here's what I see in my, in my clinic time after time after time. People come to see me with all these different types of conditions and they're not following a gluten-free diet. They've even read my book. They've even, they've read No Grain, No Pain. They, they're like, well, I read about, you know, gluten can cause rheumatoid arthritis, but nobody ever said anything about scleroderma or nobody ever said anything about ankylosing spondylitis specifically. So I want to be real specific tonight. If you see the condition on this list, then you should know that there's research, both anecdotal and clinical, uh, as well as, as uh, broad spectrum studies published in the medical literature that show the connection between gluten and every one of these conditions that we're talking about on this list. Now, I got another diagram for you because I think there were a couple of synonyms and things of that nature. So you're going to see some repeats here, but I, this was just, you know, 10 forms of muscle and joint pain caused by grain or gluten specifically. And so you'll see some overlap here, but you'll also see some new things showing up. There's some medical references. If you really, really like to read and you want to learn more, you can go track down those references. These are all from No Grain, No Pain. But I've shown, what I'm showing you here now are, are just a few of the references because there are literally thousands of references on this topic, but I wanted to show you just some highlights of some things. So this was published in uh, Rheumatology Clinics, and you can see the conclusion here, and this is about rheumatoid arthritis. It's possible that celiac disease may be the correct diagnosis in a patient with polyarthritis. What does polyarthritis mean? That means arthritis uh, affecting multiple joints. Um, polyarthritis is kind of sometimes a synonym for reactive arthritis, sometimes a synonym for um, rheumatoid arthritis. Even if the patient meets the ACR criteria for rheumatology or rheumatological arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, um, there we go. Uh, in other words, celiac disease should be considered among the differential diagnosis in a person with polyarthritis. In other words, if somebody has autoimmune arthritis, Gluten, which is what celiac disease is, is celiac disease is the intestinal manifestation of gluten sensitivity. Now. On that note, I think it's important to bring this up. There's the term celiac disease, and then there's another term, non-celiac gluten sensitivity, NCGS. This term, non-celiac gluten sensitivity, was created because a lot of people, even though they have a positive biopsy or they have the blood work that might match celiac disease, they never get a diagnosis of celiac disease. And why is that? Because celiac disease in, in medicine, it's thought that it affects the GI. So what do we see? What is a classic training in medical school is celiac patient presents with diarrhea, with weight loss, and intestinal symptoms. Okay. The reality is a person can still have gluten sensitivity. Again, that's why this term exists, non-celiac gluten sensitivity, not have these issues, but have other issues. And one of those is polyarthritis or multiple forms of arthritis. And then a gluten-free diet in many cases, and somebody will actually alleviate their arthritis. They didn't have celiac disease classically defined. Remember that you know, it's, it's kind of like when you're in school and you read something in a textbook and, and it's like what you read in the textbook doesn't really 100% match the real world. And, and so it's kind of like that. Celiac disease in a medical textbook is these things, right? But not every patient that has a problem with gluten matches these things at all. As a matter of fact, it's, it's now estimated that it's not weight loss at really at all. It's actually 60% of people with gluten issues actually are overweight. Um, same thing, most people with gluten sensitivity don't necessarily have the GI symptomatology. They have things like joint pain, neuropathy, Hashimoto's thyroid problems, so polyendocrine problems, problems with their endocrine organs, the organs that produce uh, the different hormones that help regulate the body. So this particular study, again, Celiac disease may be the correct diagnosis in a patient with polyarthritis. So if somebody presents with polyarthritis in a clinic, what this research study is saying is that the doctor should understand polyarthritis, you should rule out gluten 
as a trigger or as a cause. And so if you've been diagnosed with polyarthritis, look, I trained in the VA hospital under one of the world's renowned rheumatologists. And I can tell you, this is not something I learned in the VA hospital. It, it, it is actually something I learned in the VA hospital, but it's not something that my attending physician taught me. It's something that I had to find out because I was so frustrated with the lack of care that these veterans were getting. And it's like, everybody got the same drugs and nobody really ever got better. And, and so I started looking at diet and it was research on celiac disease that actually led me uh, to this type of information. You can see this study, this particular study is from 2011. So we're almost 10 years old here. This is not new information. And there's studies that date back even further, 30, 40 years that show this same correlation. So this is just, again, I'm trying to show you examples of evidence that you need to look at this a little in a, in a, in a strong light. So this is a study, a research study on gluten sensitivity and psoriatic arthritis. So psoriasis which is the skin manifestation. So there's, think of this two ways, psoriasis. So if you've ever had kind of the inflammatory skin disorder, psoriasis is what we call it when it affects your skin. Psoriatic arthritis is what we call it when it affects your joints. In my experience, these two conditions are the same condition. They're the same thing. It's kind of like a person with a gluten problem could have a gut issue that manifests as celiac disease, but they could also have arthritis. Well, a person could also have a skin inflammatory problem. You see what I'm saying? So, so a lot of times though, because medicine is a specialized entity, meaning if you have a skin inflammation, you go to a dermatologist, right? And so if you go to the dermatologist, they're not thinking about diet. They're not thinking about gut. They're not thinking about gluten. So oftentimes the treatment for this is immune suppressing creams or steroids. And so again, there's no solution in that. The long the, there's no solution because the day you quit taking the steroid within a matter of, of, of weeks or even a matter of days, the condition comes back if you didn't address what was actually triggering the condition. And again, I've seen thousands of people with psoriatic arthritis or psoriasis get better, right? Have this go away when they change their diet. And so what this research study is showing you see diet and psoriasis part two, celiac disease and the role of gluten-free diet. Epidemiological and clinical studies suggest there's an association between psoriasis, celiac disease, and celiac disease markers. There's early evidence to suggest that a gluten-free diet benefits those with psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. So again, research confirmation uh, on top of what we see in our clinic. Um, so it's not, again, it's not just me trying to tell you to go on a gluten-free diet for no reason. This next one here, high prevalence of gluten sensitivity in a cohort of patients with undifferentiated connective tissue disease, um, connective tissue disease, scleroderma, okay, or sclerotic, uh, like uh, connective tissue adhesions forming. So we believe that all patients with the diagnosis of undifferentiated connective tissue disease, aka scleroderma, especially those with a systemic sclerosis-like presentation should be investigated for celiac disease, even in the absence of GI symptoms. The gluten-free diet should be early recommended to all patients having undifferentiated connective tissue disease and gluten sensitivity. So uh, again, this is, this is research showing this correlation and this connection. So my, my message here is don't wait for somebody to come to you, don't wait for your doctor to come to you and say, hey, I don't, I, I, I don't wait for them to come to you and make this uh, announcement because they're never gonna do it, is my point. It's up to you to take this information, take this video, take a screenshot right here, take that to your doctor and ask them to test you for gluten sensitivity, rule it out, if you, especially if you've got any form of autoimmune arthritic condition, because it is one of the most common causes of chronic, uh, chronic arthritis of an unknown origin. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.